It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Now, before we go on, remember, Post Sugar Crisp is that swell-tasting cereal treat you can eat three ways. And talking about Sugar Crisp boys and girls, here's great news. Now you can get wonderful hand puppets of Handy, Dandy, and Candy, the Sugar Crisp Bears, and a genuine puppet theater all for yourself. So get pencil and paper ready right now, because you'll want to write down the details later on. Black gold in Paradise Valley. Oil has been discovered on the property of the widow Jensen, and the wells have been leased to a commercial company. The oil fever has spread to the ranchers, and drilling rigs and derricks dot the same pasture lands on which the cattle graze. Hey, why don't we drill for oil, Roy, like everyone else is doing? I'd rather let everyone else do it, Pat. You know, the oil isn't exactly gushing in most places. No, I guess no one but Dave Thorpe has found enough to keep a sewing machine running. It's strange, too. You know, Thorpe's halfway across the valley from the Jensen place, and yet he's the only one who's brought in a well. Yeah, and the old goat is getting rich off it. Hey, have you seen those new tank trucks he bought to ship the stuff to the coast? Oil, oil, oil. That's all you hear. I like the valley better when everyone's stuck to ranching. Well, if oil talk bores you, Dale, you're in for a dull evening because Tommy Reed's coming over. Says he has problems. Boy, oh, I wouldn't mind a few problems if I had a job like Tommy's. Running stuff for that big oil company that's working Mrs. Jensen's strike is really something. You know, I've always liked Tommy. It'll be nice to see him, even if he is going to talk about oil. Yeah, Tom's quite a boy. He'll probably wind up as president of the company someday. Wouldn't that be something? Man, if I got to be president of an oil company, I'd hire me a chauffeur to drive Nelly back. Somebody's outside. That's probably Tommy. Quiet, Bullet. <laughs> is that you, Tom? You bet. Bullet certainly saves wear and tear in your door. He heard me before I got around to knocking. <laughs> well, come on in. Hi there, Dale. Pat. Hi, <laughs> Hi Tom. Tom. Sit down, Tom. Thanks. How's the big oil tycoon? We were just talking about you. Yeah. Oh, Roy was saying the first thing we know, you'll be president of that confounded oil company. First thing you know, I may not even be with him. What happened? Did you have a better offer? Hardly. It's just that if we don't stop losing oil, I'm likely to get tossed out in my ear. Losing oil? What do you mean? Well, almost every time we ship the tank cars, get to the refinery a couple of thousand gallons short. Well, let's see, Tom. You load the cars right at the well, and then you haul them on your spur track to the main line on the other side of the valley, don't you? That's right. Every time we have four cars loaded, we notify the railroad, and they send an engine to haul them out. How many stops do they make uh, going across the valley? None. The 40-mile run to the main line, and the crews are under orders to take the cars straight through. Hmm, maybe they're stopping somewhere anyway and draining the oil. I've ridden the last two trips in the engine cab, and we certainly didn't make any stops. But we were almost 10,000 gallons short each time. The main office says the shipments have got to get through from now on or else. Well, when are you going to ship again? Tomorrow night. The switch engine will pick them up about 8 o'clock and have them at the main line siding by midnight. That siding's guarded by the railroad company, isn't it? Yeah, and the oil's being stolen between the wells and the main line. I'm sure of that. Well, you and Pat and I'd better ride the whole length of the spur track the first thing in the morning. We'll go on Nellie Bell and take it at the same speed the engine does. I don't know what we'll find out, but I'll bet we'll find out something. Pat! Nellie Bell may be a fine jeep, but she could certainly use a new set of springs. New set? She never had any to start with, Tommy. Well, I can't understand a couple of guys who ride horses all the time complaining about a few bumps. Ah, there. Does this suit you better? 
It'll be smooth as a day-old calfskin for four miles until the tracks branch away from the highway again. Well, don't give this critter a head, Pat. We want to take it about the speed the train would. Okay, but this is sure poking along. It's upgrade now from here clean to the main line. Switch engine makes maybe 10 or 15 miles an hour coming down from the foothills, but from here on, they don't do much better than seven or eight. You always ship at night, don't you, Tommy? Yeah. The railroad has only one switch engine for this territory, and it's in use during the daytime. Oh, wait a minute. Slow down, Pat. Slow down? We'll never get nowhere if I do. Well, head off into the field across the road. Drive up to that stand of eucalyptus. Well, what's up, Roy? What do you see? A pretty good camouflage job. Well, I'll be darned. A couple of big brown and green tarpaulins pulled, pulled over something behind them trees. Sure enough. Stop, Pat. At least I think that's what the fellow with the gun wants us to do. Oh, yeah. A big, tough-looking muzzler, ain't he? Yeah. All right, you fellas. Turn around and be on your way. Well, take it easy there, stranger. We were just curious what you have under those tarps. Got pretty sharp eyes, haven't you? Well, they're trucks. Oh, what kind of trucks? I'm interested in all kinds of machinery. They're and cattle I... trucks. One of them broke down last night. My partner hitchhiked back into town to get a mechanic. And you just happened to have those tarps handy, huh? Yeah, marine surplus. We pulled them over to keep the damp night air out of the engine. Well, if we can help you any, we'll be glad to. I'll have plenty of help in a little while. Well, in that case, we'll run along. Let's go, Pat. Okay. Good luck, fella. Thanks. Roy, that fella's story didn't make much sense. Yeah, if you want to know what I think, I think he was a cattle rustler. I don't think those were cattle trucks, Pat. When they get on the road again, you can open her up. We might just as well ride right on into Mineral City. Back to Roy in a jiffy. First, here's exciting news. Now you can put on your own puppet shows in a colorful puppet theater. You can get lifelike hand puppets of Handy Dandy and Candy, the three sugar crisp bears. Imagine, these puppets are beautifully made each with its own name printed across the chest. Put your hand inside and their heads, arms, and feet move. They act exactly as you want. They're in costume, too. Handy is a Mr. Fix-It. He's got a fasten-on hat, a carpenter's apron, and a real hammer. Dandy's the well-dressed man with bowler hat, walking cane, fancy vest. Sister Candy has a feathered beret, shopping bag, and housewife's apron. Here's how to get them. You can get any one puppet you choose, Handy, dandy, or candy for only 35 cents plus one sugar crisp box top. And name the puppet you want so you'll get the right one. Or better yet, for one dollar and three sugar crisp box tops, you get all three puppets plus a brilliantly colored sugar crisp theater for staging plays, plus extra hats and musical instruments. All this for one dollar and three sugar crisp box tops. So send money in box tops to Sugar Crisp. Box 8669, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now write that down. Sugar Crisp, Box 8669, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send for your puppets today. Oil shipped from the Jensen Wells in the foothills of Paradise Valley along the Spur Railroad track disappears mysteriously before the tank cars reach the main line. Roy Rogers looks over the territory and gets an idea, but many pieces of the puzzle are still missing. Well, come on, let's all have lunch at the Eureka. Oh, Dale will probably put me to work. <sighs> Roy, there isn't an awful lot of time before I should get back to the wells to see that the shipment goes out tonight. We certainly haven't found out much so far. Well, there's somebody in Eureka right now who might be able to give us some more information. Well, nobody in there but Dale and old Dave Thorpe. Well, Thorpe's the one I mean. Well, hi there, fellas. You're back earlier than I expected. Hi, hey, Dale. Dale. Hi. Mr. Thorpe dropped around, and naturally, we've been talking about oil. Roy, you ought to drill on your spread. Why, an oil well is better than a gold mine. Your well is really producing, eh, Mr. Thorpe? Barrels and barrels of the stuff. Why, it practically keeps me busy just counting the money as it rolls in. <laughs> oh, now that's the sort of thing that appeals to me. I hate to work for a living. I know it, Pat. But as long as you're here, you might as well put on an apron and get started with the morning dishes. Oh, Dale. Roy, I knew this would happen. <laughs> what happened this morning, fellows? Did you find out anything? Well, maybe. Mr. Thorpe, 
Pat tells me you've bought a couple of big tank trucks. should say I have. I do my own shipping direct to an independent refinery on the coast. First thing you know, I may buy the refinery. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cheaper to ship by rail? Well, it would be mighty expensive to build a spur into that rugged backcountry where my well is. It was much cheaper to bulldoze a road for the trucks. Oh, where do you keep the trucks, Mr. Thorpe? Well, they're on the road most of the time. You know, with all this talk about oil, I'm actually getting interested in the stuff. I'd like to see your well sometime, Mr. Thorpe. Well, about all there is to see, Miss Evans, is a derrick like you see sprouting up all over the valley. Yeah, but the derricks you see in the valley aren't producing. Ah, I'd like to have you come out sometime. I'm shut down right now because I don't have enough storage tanks to hold all the oil the well pumps. But in a couple of weeks, uh, well, I'll let you know. Well, that'll be fine. Of course, it's rugged country, and an oil well is sort of a messy place. Oh, uh, when are you shipping again, Reed? Well, I... Well, Tom's I, uh... sending out a train load tonight, Mr. Thorpe. Well, good luck to you, my boy. Good luck to you. I gotta be running along now. See you soon, everybody. Yes. So Stop long. it again, Mr. Thorpe. Yeah, I guess I'll have to. Trouble with this down there is there's no place to spend all the money I make. <laughs> so Bye. Later. Hey, Tom, do you think Thorpe knows anything about the oil business? Well, actually, he doesn't talk like he does. It's a bad thing to shut a well down once it's producing. Those underground oil pools can drain off if you don't keep a pull on them. The deal, how would you and Pat like to take a look at Thorpe's oil well this afternoon? Well, I don't know what fun that'd be if it isn't running. And, Roy, I just can't close the restaurant. Yeah, but you'll be back before the supper rush. Tommy and I have to saddle up and head for his company's wells. Uh, we'll phone you this evening before the shipment leaves, and you can tell us just what you saw at Thorpe's. <laughs> sure getting to work out today. I don't see how Thorpe gets his trucks in here. Well, you probably missed the road he built. Well, I sure haven't seen it. Now, why did Roy want us to come out here? Well, he just said we should keep our eyes open and tell him if Thorpe's is any different from other oil wells. <laughs> I should think it'd all be alike. Hey, there. Hey, see that dirt rising up there? Oh, sure. That's an oil well, huh? Well, part of it. Won't be able to see the base of the works until we get over this knoll, but little old Nellie Bell have us on top of it just a bit. Yeah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> well, I'll be darned. Pat Brady, don't tell me you're out of gas again. Uh, I guess so. Oh. Well, we'll just have to walk up the hill and down to the well. Well, maybe Mr. Thorpe will turn it on long enough to run enough gasoline out to get us back to town. <laughs> Dale, if that ain't just like a woman. You don't get gasoline out of an oil well. You don't? No, you get it out of a pump at a service station. But we can probably bar some out of Thorpe's truck, so let's go. <laughs> Reed wasn't going to tell me they were shipping tonight. But Roger spilled the beans right off. And we got the report from the well anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we got something to do. Waiting around here two or three days at a time gets you sort of goofy. Well, Joe, I guess we can't expect the oil company to send out a train every night. They can't pump it out of the ground that fast. Now, this is a better <laughs> deal than guarding the trucks like Frank does. Hank, if you and Joe really want to keep busy, I have a project for you. Some of my friends in town wanted to come out and see the oil well in operation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a laugh. I thought that maybe you boys could install a, a pipe and a small feeder tank, and if anyone wants to see the well operating, well, we just turn it on. Yeah, that's quite an idea. Wouldn't take long to rig it. Uh-oh, company. Who could that be? Have your guns ready, boys. Mine are always ready. Who is it? Dale Evans and Pat Brady, Mr. Thorpe. We're out of gas. Come in. Well, this is a surprise. I told you I'd get in touch with you when there was something to see out here. Well, Pat and I had a little time on our hands this afternoon, and, well, we didn't think you'd mind. Oh, I don't mind, well, but... We, we ran out of gas on the other side of the knoll. Uh, can we borrow some out of one of your tank trucks? Well, uh, the tank trucks are out on a run, but, uh, Hank, mm -hmm. why don't you go back with these folks and see if you can start their car for them? Uh, sure, Thorpe. Come on, folks. Uh, the little beauty ain't gonna start without gas. Well, siphon some out of my big car. It's in the shed down where the road ends. Now, see there, Dale, I told you I didn't miss the road. There ain't none. Come on, come on, let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, as long as we're here, Mr. Thorpe, aren't you going to show us around? Like I told you, there's nothing to see. But I thought an oil well would be much dirtier than this. Yeah, and it's the first oil well I ever saw with just a derrick. No pipes coming out of the ground or anything. You two were sent here to snoop. Cover them, Joe. I had them covered from the time you opened the door. Get those hands up. Hey, wait a minute. Well, Mr. Thorpe, we Take we the just... guns, Hank. I'll bet Roger sent you out here to find out something. Well, maybe you found it out. But you're never going to tell him about it. Trigger. Tom, I wish we could have gotten in touch with Dale and Pat. I can't imagine what delayed them. Well, they couldn't have gotten back to Mineral City much before 6, and if we hadn't pulled out by 6.30, the train would have beat us here. Look, Roy, there's the engine headlight. It's rounding the curve. All right. As soon as it passes us, we'll ride up to the edge of the track and swing from our horses onto the train. Listen, Roy, that's not the train. It's one of those trucks. We're directly across from that stand of eucalyptus trees. And that's the other one. Yeah. They'll pull into the road as soon as the engine passes. Stay in the shadows until there's no chance of the beam picking us out. I don't know why we just didn't board the train when it left the wells. Your whole crew would have known about it, Tommy. And one of them would probably have tipped off the hijackers. Yeah, that's right. They evidently knew exactly when the train was going to leave. Let's go, Trigger. Get up, Speedy. Can you make it all right, Tom? Sure thing, Roy. Easy now, Trigger. Right alongside here, boy. You follow us. Ready, Tom? Right. Let's go. Hey, Tommy, you're quite an acro. Oh. Well, hopping trains is a little out of my line, but I made it. Well, we can see the road from between the cars. Look, one of the trucks is drawn alongside. You can make it out pretty well in the lights of the rear truck. It's an oil truck. And they're getting ready to hijack a load from your tank cars. But if the train doesn't stop... Well, they've got a pretty fair acrobat aboard that lead truck, too. Watch it. Hey, is he going to jump from the catwalk of the truck to the catwalk of the tank car? Well, he's going to try it. And he's going to drag that hose with him. Now watch him. Hi, George Roy, he did it. Hey, he's working on that seal like he knows his business. Look, he's got it off and he's fastening the hose to the valve. Sure, and the oil will siphon from the train right into the truck. You'd have to see it to believe it, Roy. It's it's like refueling a plane in midair. Well, that's the principle. And I'd better go talk to that fellow. But, But, Roy, if you get out in the catwalk, the lights of the rear truck will pick you up. I'll have to crawl over the top and try to get my arm around his neck. Maybe I can persuade him to talk. Be careful, Roy. It's slippery. Well, there are footholds. And if that hijacker can stick on, I guess I can. All right, fella. I got you. Talk faster. I'll throw you off here. Let go of me. Let go of me. I'll let go of you as soon as you tell me who owns those trucks. Who are you working for? You're Roy Rogers, Sarge. None of your business. And you'd better answer my question. You'd better forget the whole thing. The boss was thinking you might be around. He's ready for you. The boss is old Dave Thorpe, isn't he? Sure, he's following in the rear truck, and if he sees anything going wrong, he's got your girlfriend and Pat Brady right where he wants. What? Uh, tighten that cab. He ain't planning to fill that truck tonight. We're just using it for kind of a scout car. Well, I can't let anything happen to deal with Pat. If you're smart, you'll drop off this train before I finish this job and tell the boss what happened. All right, fella. You win. I'll get off the train. Back to Roy in a minute, but don't forget those Sugar Crisp puppets. For 35 cents and one Sugar Crisp box top, get either handy, dandy, or candy. Or all three puppets plus theater for only one dollar and three box tops. Send money in box tops to Sugar Crisp. Box 8669, Chicago 77, Illinois. And remember... As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Roy Rogers surprises a gang of thieves in the act of transferring oil from a moving train to Dave Thorpe's tank trucks but he's forced to retreat when he learns that Thorpe has Dale and Pat bound in the rear truck, waiting for a sign of trouble ahead to wreak his vengeance on them. We'll have to hop off, Tommy. Why, Roy? What went wrong? I'll tell you later. Let's go. Trigger. Trigger, boy, come here. Trouble, Roy? Plenty of it. Pat and Dale are tied in the rear truck with Thorpe. 
Good boy, Trigger. Here we are, speedy fella. Mount, Tommy. We'll swing onto the road and follow the rear truck. I'll tell you what to do. And the minute they draw the hose back, we'll go into action. There. Now you know the whole secret of my oil well. Yeah, pretty slick, Thorpe. And pretty rotten, too. Hank did a good job, boss. We ain't going to fill this truck tonight, eh? Not tonight. Won't be time before the road branches off from the track. Of course, 5,000 gallons ain't hay. Well, it's the last 5,000 gallons you'll ever steal, and I'll tell you that. And that's for sure. When we get away from you, your racket's finished. Oh, but you'll never get away. You're riding clear through to the coast with us, and we'll finish you off there. <laughs> oh, where's Roy? Where's Roy? Yeah, I rather expected Rogers would be around, but without the information which you would have given him, I, I guess he couldn't quite figure things out. Hank's back on the truck, boss. Hey, they're blinking the lights. They want us to stop. All right, stop then, Joe. Everything looked perfect to me, but you never it can tell. perfect, Thorpe. Too perfect. You're covered, boy. Why, you... Don't make a move. Roy! Roy, where'd you come from? Stop this truck, fella. Hurry up, Tommy! Rogers, I have four men in that lead truck, and they're ready for anything. Well, they aren't ready for what's coming now. Roy, that sheet of flame! Hey, the front truck's on fire. Boss, the boys will be trapped up there. They're pulling off the road. They'll jump out. And they'll get a hot reception when they do. There. Pat your loose, and here are Tharp's guns. Keep them covered. All right, Trigger, come on, boy. Now, go, Trigger. Roy, be careful. We're going to round up the gang of them, Trigger. It worked, Roy. It worked. Whoa, Trigger. Whoa, boy. All right, you men, pile out of that cab. But pile out with your hands up. Thorpe, Joe, bring the fire extinguisher. Thorpe and Joe are busy, fella. Rogers. You bet it's me, and I'm going to finish what I started on the train. Keep the others covered, Tommy. There's plenty of light to watch. I'll slug with you any time, Rogers. All right, let's go. <laughs> You handled yourself on the train better than you do on the ground, fella. I'll handle you anywhere, anytime. All right, you don't move for those guns. Hey, your friends can't help you. Not with Tommy Reed watching them. Come on, I thought you could fight. Roy, good work. Good work yourself, Tommy. That fella might have plugged me if you hadn't changed his mind for him. Hey, here's Thornton, the one they call Joe, Roy. Yeah, Pat and I thought we'd just march them over here for a preview of what they've got coming. All right, you other two. Line up with your boss and your friend. You fools. You fools. How'd that truck catch fire? Well, let's say we were lucky. It was a lucky fire, all right, even if you did lose the oil, Tom. Roy saved Pat and me, but, but these other men might have gotten away. The only thing lucky about it was that Hank left the valve open when he finished stealing the oil. Tom didn't have to ride alongside and open it before he tossed a match in it. What? what? Yeah. We lost some oil, but I've got a hunch it's the last we'll lose. You're right, Tommy. And I've got a hunch that Thorpe and his friends have found out that the best way to find oil is to drill for it. But the only drilling they'll do for the next 20 years will be the lockstep drill in the prison yard. Before we close, remember that Post Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat three ways. And boys and girls, don't forget to send away for handy, dandy, and candy the wonderful Sugar Crisp puppets we've told you about. You'll have real fun with them. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfelt and music by Milton Charles. Come and get it. Come and get it. For quick two-minute energy for work and play, how about Grape Nut Flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those Grape Nut Flakes? How about those Grape Nut Flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those Grape Nut Flakes? They are so good, good for you, too. The two-minute energy works for you, so how about them? How about them? How about Grape Nut Flakes? Grape Nut Flakes is one of the triple-wrapped post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. 
Look for Grape Knots Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in the cast were Frank Hemingway, Earl Ross, Tom Holland, Frank Gerstle, and Jim Nusser. The script was based on an idea by Nate Kaplan. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.